In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing this Hyphonics. This is an X14 Brutus series, and this piece here is the X1900.1D. So this is a monoblock subwoofer amplifier only grunt force power super D class is what they call it. Um, now this one here is compliant, and I want to first make that notation because it is here on this box. And when I see these types of things, I become very leery of them. But you see here it says amplifier power standard CEA 2006 compliant. What that means to the consumer, what you should know about these types of ratings, when you look for an amplifier, this is a very good feature to look for because this is basically telling you that what's on the bottom of this box, which I want to show you, all this mumbo jumbo, all these specifications are all true to the fact. So what this box says is what this amplifier will do. Unlike a cheaper, lesser quality type of amplifier or something that's going to do a whole lot of show and no go. Now, although this amplifier is beautiful, it's, it's very, very easy on the eye by far. Um, this lights up, but again, don't let that fool you into thinking that this is some lower end amplifier because this, my friends, certainly is not. Um, everything about this amplifier, almost everything, is really, really good quality. I'm going to show you why. Right here, the base knob. Although it's only uniformly able to be mounted in one position, you could dehouse this thing, of course, voiding your warranty to make this a smoother install for a flush mount base knob. On the back, you have an 8-pin Ethernet style plug. Okay, you can see that this, even look at the hardware. Not those cheap, you know, chinky screws. I mean, this is all well really built. Um, everything flows very nice, fits very nice. Ethernet type of style plug. So you can see it's, a, again, 8-pin, 4-pair. High quality, very lengthy. You can see that, that they really put some love and effort and attention into the quality of their stuff. And again, I love to see that kind of stuff. And this is the kind of stuff I love to review because I hate just bashing the heck out of stuff. It's nice once in a while to see something that's good. So that's why I want to take my time and show you about this. Now, I've been a Hyphonics dealer back when it was just Hyphonics. I know I don't know how many years ago now, but 10 years or so when Maxonics bought out the company, I expected them to just destroy it make money off the name until they just annihilated it and it just went by the wayside. That is definitely not what they did. They kept this amplifier respectable and I love that. Now here's a little tip for anybody who's going to go out and buy an amplifier. And I've shared, shared this, this tip with a lot of people in the past. They were very grateful so I'm going to say it again. Whenever you're buying an amplifier, and here's what uh, keyed me off is when I, when I opened up the amplifier it came with this extra hardware um, and this extra fuse. And I said, hmm, 160 amp fuse, that prompted me to look at how many fuses were on there. Now, if you don't know what voltage law is, what that means is that in a, in a pie chart, if you had voltage, amperage, and wattage, if you know the answer for two of them, you can always get the third. Now, you know that this is going into a 12 volt vehicle. You know that you have 60 amps times two, so you have 120 amps. You multiply the amps times the volts, that's going to give you the output in wattage, okay? Not to say that it's going to do exactly that in wattage because you would have to have, you know, a tester, and some pretty sophisticated equipment, which I have some of here, and I did rate this amplifier. This amplifier by dynamic power does create everything that this box says it will do. In dynamic power, as for just grunt force and just, you know, subsonic bass booming, this will tolerate about 8 to 10 seconds of grunt force power just as a subsonic, just boom, boom, boom kind of stuff. This amp actually does what it what it says it'll do, and that's good enough for me. There's no amplifier on earth that I know can really do much more than that, no matter how good it is. So over here on the side, you have all these strip terminals, these machine screws. So you have your ground, which is, is a solid. It's about a 4-gauge, 12, uh, 12 uh, positive 12 volts, sorry, uh, over here on the other side. And in the center, you have your remote. Two fuses, one extra that they give you, which is nice. Um, and over here, it says a mono amplifier, so it doesn't matter if you're running um, a configuration in stereo because this thing just simply is not capable because this is a mono amplifier. Now, there are a whole bunch of other models in the series, which are four channel, two channel, you know, as well as the mono channels. Um, but for my, my review, I'm going to just tell you like it is. So this one here, you could just connect as many as you want to negative and positive. It doesn't matter if you do po left positive, right negative, or any of that stuff. It just does, simply doesn't apply on a mono amplifier. They just give you the two strips just to be generous. So if you have like two woofers, instead of jamming them all, all the wires into the two holes, they give you four. Which is also a nice feature about this system is that they give you this 
which is really good and it's a good way to educate consumers and I am all about educating consumers obviously which shows you how to do single voice configuration series parallel combo of the two um, this is all really good because this amplifier has its ratings it can only tolerate a one ohm load to go below that it's just simply going to create a whole bunch of distortion it's going to overheat your amplifier and ultimately break something so be respectful to yourself to your vehicle to its capabilities and what this amplifier can do because if you brought this online like 90 percent of the people i would imagine do um, you're not going to be eligible for this little warranty card uh, to upgrade to the two-year warranty because you know a lot of people just don't want to pay full retail and no wonder why however if you did they have this as an option which is cool um, if you can utilize it by all means go for it aside from the hardware the extra fuse um, the installation guide is very straightforward there's not a whole lot to it it's a real simple um, trifold for your setup now everything that there is to to go over and which is noteworthy is located right here so I'm just gonna prop this up so I can talk to you about what's going on on the side okay so here you have RCA preamp inputs and outputs so if you have your RCA going in you want it to take that same feed and have a slave output to another amplifier right next to it that's what you would utilize that for it's just a passive pass through over here you have your input level and on the input level I want to talk about that that is not a volume or a gain control everybody seems to think that you just put it in and it's like you know like the old rock star movie where you put it on zero or or eleven and there's nothing in between it's not a gain setting the right way to tune these things is to turn the head unit off confirm that the primary volume control is turned down all the way counterclockwise turn on your head unit preferably a CD source make sure you balance your fader bass treble are all set to the center or zero adjustment make sure that the green light at the end of the amplifier is on it's powered up and it's ready to go play a clean music track something that you're very familiar with and play it so that way you 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 just you just play it so that way you can take your uh, small screwdriver and start increasing the volume or turning this knob clockwise just till you get around three quarters 75 percent or till you start to hear the speakers begin to slightly start producing distortion you, and since this is a sub amplifier and subwoofers as we all know is audible distortion it might be a little hard but do your very best to listen to it, listen for this distortion. Once you get to that distortion, you're going to take it, cut it back ever so slightly, and leave it alone. That's how you do it. So you've heard it from me. If you ever wanted to know the right way to set up an amplifier, that is it. Um, I'm guilty of doing it the wrong way. I have for many years, and I see people countlessly do this on a daily basis. That's the right way to do this. I'm telling you, you will benefit and enjoy your music so much more if you just do it the right way. Now aside from that, you have your input level, which we just covered. You have your phase, which of course is 0 to 180 degrees. It should be self-explanatory, um, but you know, I'm not even going to waste my time on it. Your, your remote gain control. Now this is not going to give you extra and over and above an abundance of power aside from the level can control. What this does, it's only going to control what's going on here through this plug remotely. So from the front, you can control this, the same feature from either location. Your base EQ, which is 0 up to 10 decibels you got that now that's pretty straightforward as well um, if you, uh, most people just leave it on on flat you know I'm impartial to it either way subsonic you should have basically if you have a vented enclosure and your box is tuned to say uh, 30 Hertz the subsonic you typically by rule of thumb you want to cut that back about 5 Hertz below that so that that way this is going to target that frequency and make the most pain for the bang for the buck that's how it's done LPF is short for low pass filter. So you'll see here it has 35 hertz on a low end and then you have 25, 20, I'm sorry, 250 hertz on the high end. So you're going to want to typically, I usually have that, not at 250 because that's ridiculous for a sub amp, but I would put it usually at around 130, 150, whatever. And I usually control it from my head unit. So that way I have ultimate control from the head unit up front instead of going into the back and making this chance. Because if you mount this, you have some sophisticated amp rack or some, you know, crazy concoction you don't want to go into the trunk and deal with it so it's much easier to overlap that feature program it higher in the front and get control there as opposed to limiting yourself and having this set incorrectly where you can't get it get to it conveniently because if it's not convenient chances are you're never going to use it power and protection lights which work phenomenally always have in high phonics great feature the size is excellent the mounting tabs for the feet are very strong uh, they could be a little bit more versatile I think but you know Unless you're making your own amplifier line, you know, you're going to have to deal with what the deal is. 
Um, they put these little stickers on there, so if you, you get in there and start screwing around with stuff, you're not supposed On the bottom of the sample, you'll notice that they have these little air vents, which I think, in my opinion, is a little bit weird. I think they should have placed those on the sides. I think that would have been a little bit better. I know they do that in some other amplifiers. Why they did not do that, and they chose to go with these aluminum heat sinks to disperse the heat, in my opinion, is a little bit off kilter, but, you know, if that's all I can say that's bad about this amplifier, believe me, that's good because I'm the first one to rag on anything. Also, when this amplifier comes on, this has a beautiful blue LED. It looks really high tech. At nighttime, it's a gorgeous sight to see. So all in all, these Hyphonics amplifiers are awesome. And they even have an Elite Series, so if you're looking for something even more hardcore to hurt yourself with, check those out as well. Um, their site is maxsonics.com with two X's. Um, it's a great piece. So there's my take on the Hyphonics Brutus Series amplifiers.